my in-laws surprised our family with a, with a holiday cruise, right? And so it was like, oh, we get to go on a boat and kind of trapped with your in-laws, even though I like them, but still, it's, you know, you kind of have that feeling. And then I remember as we were boarding the ship, I noticed, and because it was a holiday cruise especially, it was all families, right? And it started to come together all of a sudden, like, wait, look at all these families. What a great opportunity for our monster family, you know? And it started to come, become very organic. And I've always wanted to do a story about Dracula falling in love. And then when I came back, I pitched the idea to the head of the studio and she loved it. And everybody kind of, everybody saw the potential right away that you could get away from the hotel, but at the same time, it's a hotel on the water. So the core of the, the core of the franchise is still the same, but now we get to see this big monster world. In the first two movies, we really just saw more of the human world. Maybe in the second one, we saw a little bit of like the monster vampire camp. But really, we never got to explore where the monsters have a much bigger world outside of just the hotel. So that was the whole idea. So, you know, they take gremlin air to get to their destination, which is the gremlins trying to destroy the plane the whole way, right? They get to the Bermuda Triangle, which is kind of the port, and it's kind of what is our silly, crazy way to um, illustrate and make the Bermuda Triangle visual and very unique. And it's basically a triangle in the water, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we go to under, an, an underwater volcano, which is more about kind of what happens there. And we just made it more kind of red and it feels like it's a, a monster location, even though it's kind of not. And then of course we did Atlantis, right? And Atlantis is our, our final destination. And we wanted to spin Atlantis where it, what it would be contemporary, right? So we kind of made it like a big Vegas hotel or like all of Vegas in this gigantic vertical city. We have the scene where Dracula and Erica are on a date, right? And he, she, he helps her to sit down and he's trying to be very confident on the date and he sits down. But we did this like one second orchestration of movement to illustrate his overconfidence and he being very suave. And we worked like almost like four to six weeks with one animator on the scene to show the character, right, without him having to say anything. And, and we did it and I was really happy with it. And then we had a screening of about like a thousand people. And when that scene came on, everybody laughed, right? And that's like one of these golden moments as being as an animator, that's what you look for. It's totally pantomime. It's totally character motivated and, uh, and it was great. And so I think it's probably the most proud that I've been. I mean, I think I've always identified with Dracula just because he's like an obsessive dad and I'm kind of like that to a small degree. But having three kids, you're always trying to juggle and you're always trying to see that perspective of it. So I think Dracula has always been close to my heart. It's funny because you think with all these comedians, there would be crazy amount of ad-libbing and there really isn't. They're all, uh, they're all craftsmen about the, the art of joke telling, right? So it kind of has to be in the script initially. You know, they're not gonna let you go uh, if, you, if they don't understand the joke. They're gonna either not say it or ask about it. So there's a lot of pressure initially when we get into the record where you wanna make sure that they all like the joke. Like David Spade, he ad-libs a lot for sure, right? You can just let him go and he's amazing, you know? And one of the ad-libs that made it in is actually from Adam and it was after the fart, he goes, was it you? You know, and it was a great <laughs> little ad lib and we put it in and we all laughed and it really, uh, it really made that scene. I think generally, you know, I like to think of it more simplistic about why audiences with parents and kids all would go. And I think because the, the sensibility of the humor and the style of humor is for kind of all ages. You know, I think it was dating back to the first movie. I went to the premiere, you know, the opening weekend, and I sat there and there was this dad and his son, right? And maybe the kid was maybe like eight years old or something. And there was a scene where Frankenstein jumped off the giant tentacle into the water and then broke. And both, they both laughed. Right. And you start to realize, like, right, this kind of physical humor, if it's done right, transcends any kind of age. Right. And so for this movie, 
we really put a lot of that in there, you know. And then so far from some of the screenings that I've seen, both adults and kids are laughing at the same things. Hey movie fans, Vale here with an interesting motion capture fact from 2003's Finding Nemo. For the character Bruce, extensive motion capture was used of actual great white sharks to get the character's shark look. Six different sharks were used, including two from the private collection at Mandalay Bay Casino in Las Vegas. I loved Finding Nemo. What about you? Stay updated on all the latest trailer releases by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. Bye!